Hey everybody, it's Triple L here to talk about My Hero Academia chapter 421. It's been a while. I get sick a lot. I hope my voice ain't too bad today. Let's just get into it. You might hear a bird in the background occasionally. Like that. I'll try to clip him out when I can. Anyway, 421. So, you know, it's a great time uh, to be... One of the reasons I felt relatively okay in like, not talking about Hero Academia too often was largely because... Well, we're kind of at the end here. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong camera. We're kind of at the end here. So, usually when I'm gone and I come back, I would, what we would start with is talking about what are we missing from the story. The cool thing is that we've gotten a lot that used to be on the checklist. For instance, Eri. Eri got to help Izuku. She was used to help the villain side and, and now she got a use on the hero side. And what's worthwhile there is to just note that I think it was really creative how Horikoshi used Eri in this situation. Alright, so we have that. Eri is no longer on the board as something we have to look forward to. Sero also has great moments happening. He had moments um, in 420. Uh, we know that Sero Horikoshi was always planning a great moment with him. Him getting rhetoric here in 421 was very good. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, Sero did something. He prevented um, All for One from having a critical moment against Izuku. That might have been his contribution, so we can no longer count on Sero. Going from there, what else do we know that Horikoshi has said out loud that we can say might still happen? Because Horikoshi, we've seen, he is very committed to getting all his ideas out there. One of the big flags is Class 2A. Um, they were, uh, he wanted to do something with them, so maybe they might still get something here when everyone else is showing up. And beyond that, we haven't seen the characters from uh, Horikoshi's Zoo series. Like, Technically, we have. Like, Gang Orca is from that. Um, Uwa Bami is from that, if I recall her name correctly. But we haven't seen the main pair, as far as I'm concerned. Or as far as I can remember. If, if I'm wrong, someone please just let me know below. But we saw Barrage, or the one for Barrage. Um, so we're still missing some little elements. And if we talk about things that I'm personally expecting, I still expect international heroes to some degree here. Uh, but I do expect to see Toga and maybe Mr. Compress come back specifically to call Shigaraki back out even though in this chapter like there's someone talking about talking about things that make it seem like Shigaraki might not be coming back but that's what I'm personally expecting so honestly if I was to estimate like how many chapters here academia we have left I would say between 430 440 although I'm I'm betting for the 430 in all honesty so that if, if we're going for 430 we have like nine chapters um, we would get the announcement maybe at chapter when we have like six chapters left. That's when we probably would know. I do see levels of writing rush here. Um, just with some optimizations that Horikoshi makes here and there. But you know, I recently I also read about how Horikoshi has been getting more sick. Um, I think this was in Value 39 Extras about how he, can, um, he can't dr uh, draw as quickly anymore. And that's why he's getting less page counts. Um, and how everyone's bending around him to try and like make this work for him. So honestly... You know, if you have a situation where you have less page counts coming up and then you're also like trying to meet a certain amount of story, I can see why there would be optimizations happening here and there. It was actually really funny to like read a volume, I think it was a story nine extras, and him talking about how it was the editor that got a few extra pages for one of the chapters. It really is a team effort. Anyway, let's talk about 421. I was hoping we would get spoilers today because, you know, it's been the break week. I was really hoping we would get something, but we didn't, so here we are. For the record, I'm using uh, TCB scans. I didn't see too much differences in the in the translation, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too critical on the translations though because we're not looking at officials. So one of the first things I wanna say when we're looking at this page of the characters is well, you know, remember that one shot of everyone looking constipated or a good chunk of people looking constipated as they thought about uh, all for one uh, making Izuku's life miserable? I really, really hope that we do get to see everyone get at least one shot on this guy. A few people have already. They don't really need to get more shots, but I want to see everyone get a shot on him. Speaking of that, I also saw recently the new opening for the new season, season seven, and I, I thought like the money shot was probably the best part of the opening. Uh, I'll have my opinions about that opening later. Um, but I, I did really enjoy seeing that opening. Um, the, that, the energy that you saw in the money shot when everyone's like helping Izuku along, I kind of I kind of hope we get something equivalent in the manga. Uh, of just a full-on all members of class 1a there anyway um their dialogues aren't important for story they're good for character and it's just like it, it's a rallying cry pretty much now here we go into the wonderful we are here shot unfortunately the thing with the fan scans is that they are a little bit muddier than the actuals 
Uh, but we can tell who's more or less there. We have a few extras coming in. We can see a few more of Class 1B there. I see Pony in the background, which makes me personally very happy. Kind of wish Monomo was here. We have Vanta Black as well. Anyway, the We Are Here shot with the portals and everything looks really cool. Now, if there was any part of the chapter that is actually significantly interesting, because the chapter is a good chunk of choreography, it would be this page, because this is the page that's going to be the most important, and it's, and it's going to be the page that is probably going to be the most relitigated, uh, because we're doing Vestige World shenanigans on this one. This is, initially when I was reading it in the spoilers, I thought this was strange to use it, because in the spoilers it sounded like they were saying that nihilism and apathy could have been a motivator to bring someone back. Um, I do think like the translation and the officials and the fan scans kind of make it a little bit better, but just very quickly to go through it. All for one says, as a part of Tamora, I was supposed to vanish alongside him, but when I heard the sound of Yoichi being shouted to pieces, my whole world turned gray. Now, the reason this is strange is because it is very odd to use nihilism and using the world turning gray as a motivator for someone's um, existence to come back and like the strangeness here is really with the word choice because you can conceive of a of a of an emotional model where grief is enough to wake someone up because grief is a very powerful emotion it's just like the metaphor of saying that your world turned gray like when someone grays out that because that means that they've become like super passive that's that's why like when you have a character coded as gray or when you see like a, a when people um demonstrate worlds without emotions or worlds without free will they have gray worlds like that's like the real um metaphorical kind of like hurdle there it's the, specifically the connotations that come with the color gray um if i was writing that I don't think I would have described grief like this. And, you know, I would have gone into like a whole thing about how maybe um, Horikoshi will change the lines in um, the volume release, like how he changed Shoto's lines uh, when it was talking about Dobby, which I thought was a very good move back then. But here, because it's all for one and all for one doesn't really know himself all that well emotionally, I feel like you could have it relitigated by another character and they tell him something like, oh, all for one, you didn't get these you didn't describe your emotions correctly or something like that anyway uh that's what like my mind says when i see gray i see a lot of difficulty with that as a metaphor i would personally use something different or i would elaborate on it a little bit more and that's like what caught my attention but let's continue reading what he says here my attachment was severed and then no attack has since been able to get through this void of pure loss so he's definitely leading in on the whole thing of grief um, and that's how I was able to avoid certain defeat. Now, okay, so on one level, you have All for One describing his emotions. This page is sort of important because it justifies, yo, man, this is how I came back. Because apparently, the, th the thing here is that you really don't need to go through the motions of explaining what's going on because, like, Vestige World does not have any concrete rules. The people trying to put rules on Vestige World are um, All for One and Shigaraki. And because they're doing this in the same chapters that the that the phenomena occurs in it's just like there's not really a point in keeping up with it because they're probably wrong for instance this whole thing as a part of tomorrow i was supposed to vanish alongside him what does that even mean how was like in what way was shigaraki going to vanish it's not like shigaraki himself gets fully destroyed and like tenko is there and can't remember who shigaraki was and remember the shenanigan that shigaraki pulled where he kept a tenko inside of him only so that he could grow back from the Tenko. You remember that? That was wild. So you have these guys doing crazy, like, ego state physics here. And when they're talking about, like, this whole thing of how this works, and Izuku over here is, like, confused, like, yo, why is this guy? He was fully integrated. Why is he back? It's like, you know, you guys are talking about why things shouldn't be happening here, but I, I really don't believe you because I know you're going to relitigate this later. Because, um, like, for instance, Yoichi being shattered to pieces, bruh. Yoichi did not get any kind of send-off. I think Yoichi's coming back. None of the vestiges got a send-off. I think they're coming back. Um, Shigaraki, this is about saving Tenko. There is no way we're, go we're leaving this manga without saving Tenko, all right? Anyway, point is, what we're supposed to take away from here is what All for One thinks was going to happen and a justification for why he didn't disappear with Shigaraki, even though, like, I think if you mentally... Like, honestly, if you mentally weaken Shigaraki, it makes 100% sense that All for One would just come back because these guys are always fully in um, 
in a battle here. And this whole idea about like subsuming vestiges too, it's like, for, if there's ever a page that's going to be relitigated by the characters, it's this page. I can't wait to see what exceptions are going to come out. I can't, actually you can see it right here, right? In this very page, he's like, yo, I was going to disappear, but then incident A happened and therefore I came back, right? So same thing with Yorichi. Oh, yo, Yorichi was supposed to be dead, but then incident B happened and Yorichi came back and I couldn't sense him because he was inside of me the whole time. Probably they're going to go find Tenko in there. Uh, that's what I personally believe. Um, anyway, uh, that's the most important page. It's going to be the most critical page going forward, I would say, in my estimation. Um, now, pay, this next page is actually really good just for like general metaphor of like what makes people stronger in stories. I think, yeah, tragedies make people stronger a lot of times, but then you have just people that want to work hard and that can also be very good if they have aptitude. Um, in that way, uh, Sero comes in as the everyman in a situation. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I thought that was interesting rhetoric to have for him. Like, yeah, sometimes they're just going to be normal people. Again, uh, Hody's dedication to his characters is on full force, is on full display in uh, this kind of chapter. Alright, if there was ever going to be a page that was really important for like figuring out, yo, are Ida, Ochako, or Bakugo going to show up here? It's this page. The reason for that is, those guys, like you even see it in the newest opening, these are the main people, right? They are not going to miss out on this. If Shoto is here, they're all coming back. Ida, for sure, is coming into this fight. Um, Ochako is probably coming into this fight. Bakugo probably coming back into this fight. They're not going to have this whole thing where everyone's on their last legs. Kaminari's over there looking like an idiot. They're not going to have this whole thing where everyone's at their limits and those people don't show up. They're going to pop in. They're going to get one heck of an adrenaline rush and they're going to show up. Same way that I think Toga's going to show up to help Shigaraki here. Um, so we're going to get those guys coming back. Uh, Shoto is a good sign of that. It's cool to see both of them, Endeavor and Shoto, having a moment. And it's good to see Sero ultimately linking up uh, with this whole situation. As we know, he did have thoughts about what happened to Shoto and um, or when Shoto beat Dobby. And so we finally got that answered here. Like Horikoshi knew what he was doing. He wanted to have this little message about Sero coming in here. And overall, Sero as a support character, hey, he pulled them away, he did very good. Now, if you were ever gonna talk about like Horikoshi cramming in details, this is definitely one of those pages to talk about because here you have a quick justification. Yo, hey, why is Endeavor here? Oh, Endeavor, you're here because like, you can still do shit. You're gonna hurt mom if you don't do shit. So like go and do shit somewhere else, right? So that was very nice. Very nice to have that moment there. Uh, you have Sero talking about um, you have Sero talking about what he's been thinking and addressing Shoto like that, and you have present Mike coming in. Um, I do like that Horikoshi keeps showing the little detail of Kurugiri and the speckle of white that's inside representing Shirakumo, so that's really good. Okay, we move on to the next page, and present Mike pretty much sets up that this is like their big day, their final fight. Um, what I think is really funny here is that All For One is like so many wounded heroes and I feel nothing that's sad, honestly. It feels like All For One is just kind of in his emo phase. Uh, <laughs> it's just funny. I just can't help but see him in his emo phase here. Uh, but yeah, he gets cool panels here and there. Uh, he's always very conceited. If there's one thing that you should always appreciate Horikoshi for, it's how committed he is to these characters' characterization. I also hope that President Mike, when he did this shout, he used his quirk to do it, just because, you know, that adds on to some of the damage. Okay, so the next page is purely just to showcase some team play. Uh, you have Black Hole usage, then you have Ultrasonic usage, you have uh, Hound Dog being used as well. Um, then you have, like, the Diversion crew. So, one thing here is, this is the unfortunate thing with Hero Academia, is that they never really have really good choreography, because so many people have one-hit kills. I mean, like, a Black Hole is a one-hit kill if it hits you normally. Um, you have so many one-hit kills, you don't really have a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. But this is like, this is probably going to be like the mode and the pinnacle of the choreography that Horikoshi can do with these characters. It's pretty much just these characters with one, f like abilities with one function. It's pretty much just use them in rapid succession one after the other. Um, instead of having a situation where you have one character using multiple skills in a really dramatic fashion. Uh, that's just like the unfortunate thing that comes with Hero Academia's style of powers. If there was ever one thing that limited Hero Academia, it was definitely having so many powers that are so one note that you can't really work around them or break them. And then you have to like be really thankful for people like Endeavor and Bakugo who have powers that are versatile enough to like handle high level choreography. Anyway, but like that's why like in Hero Academia you see like a lot of effect depiction. And destruction like heck this is a good panel of it right there's just scenery getting broken up because this is pretty much all they can really do here and just to give you a, like an idea of what um, high level choreography would look like you have uh, all for one here using these rivets of his 
um, a way to like do high level choreography is that you would zoom in like for four pages or so of those rivets coming in towards one character and the character like very dramatically avoiding the rivets because when that gets animated and you have like the full motions there and like if you gotta remember like the manga is pretty much a storyboard for the anime as well and with the Hero Academia anime in particular if Horikoshi doesn't draw it Bones ain't gonna animate it as we've seen with Mirio and back in uh, the hideout raid you're gonna get a slideshow otherwise if you have those action beats drawn out, it just really helps and it's going to make a better experience for the anime in general. Um, so with the like with Rivets, Rivets is a really good melee type thing. If you had Bakugo versus Rivets, you would probably have some really good avoidance kind of choreography and some really kind of good stuff. Um, also, like one thing that holds back here Academia is that Horikoshi doesn't want to kill people. That's why when um, you had All Might versus All for One and All for One's regening, you had All Might actually do incredibly amazing stuff that made that fight so worthwhile because Horikoshi didn't have to worry about killing All for One. Like honestly, All for One has a All for One is such a great villain that he raises all the other characters. And this is probably what you want your villain to do. All for One right now is carrying so much of the story on his back purely out of his sponge capabilities, and that should be respected. Cuz without All for One, Kaminari's oh sorry. Without All for One, Jiro's not getting a moment. Um Tokoyami's not getting a moment. All Might's not getting a moment. Higanto Makia's not getting a moment. Kim, uh, Kirishima's not getting a moment to block uh, All for One. Yeah, man. Too many people without All for... Heck, Bakugo. Bakugo doesn't get anything without All for One's existence. All for One is carrying this manga on his shoulders, and that's what a good villain should do in terms of, like, elevating other characters. I, I, you gotta remember, like, fundamentally, your hero's only as good as their villain because, like, without a villain, you don't have... Um, you don't have a... You don't have difficulty in a hero's journey in a battle shonen like other, obviously there's other ways of creating difficulty in a hero's journey we have this heartbreaking um revelation that my embers have not gone out so like izuku right now is using the all might power you know is Iku, izuku going to be quirkless commenter jason thomas was really sad grappling with the possibility that izuku is going to end the show quirkless me personally I think with the advent of the Iron Might suit, I think there's a possibility that Izuku becomes a fully support tech kind of hero. Because honestly, for a lot of people, they shouldn't be using their quirks. Their quirks are stupid. They really should just be using All Might suits, if they can afford it. <laughs> um, but the support equipment in Hero Academia, the material science in, Her in Hero Academia is so ridiculously amazing that they really should be doing more of this. And when you have Momo, the human fabricator right there, and Mei, the genius, you and Melissa on the other side of the ocean, you really could have a future of here academia where everyone's using technology more often just because like if there's one thing that we've seen here scientific development always beats quirks mm, okay you know what scientific development beats quirks 90 percent of the time um because just because like a lot of the high-end threats are largely because of scientific development whether it be nomu or like this shikaraki body heck man you have genesis of flesh without using a quirk because aizawa can't cancel it out Anyway, um, the future is bright for Izuku if he does lose his powers, but with Movie 2 stuff, I feel like Izuku could get his powers back. Um, yeah, honestly, I think Horikoshi could go either way, and I'm not too attached to either outcome. I do still have questions about the stockpile uh, user. We didn't really see their vestige, and I wonder if Horikoshi forgot about them or if they're going to come out as like a last-minute thing. After that, we have the page where uh, Izuku is given the All Might shirt, so now he's a true fanboy, and he even gives us the time to tell us that he has five variations available in all sizes thank you izuku didn't know i needed to know that um and then you have the do your best as everyone sees izuku starting to run you have gran torino showing up there and then you have the do your best page and for that page let me say this when i look at this page it really makes me wonder are we gonna get a whole thing of izuku saying um my body just moved on its own are we gonna call back to that because that'd be pretty cool um it's a really beautiful page i really like it um, I, I really wonder if there's going to be a parallel to the beginning of Hero Academia here. It would be really nice if so. But, um, yeah. Overall, solid. So, um, chapter 421, it has like what? About 14, 13 pages. Uh, not, counting, not counting the double pages. Maybe there's 16 pages. I don't know. Um, I think like it was mostly a setup chapter and also a showcase chapter. Just to show like, hey, these guys are doing their best trying to turn all for one. Um, I'm really excited to see because in my theory, in my theorizing of Horikoshi's style, having many people have many quirks here is probably the 
he's in the best situation to create really cool choreography just because he has a lot of different combat effects he can work with so i'm hoping to see something neat already the stuff we got with uh black hole being used and like hound dog carrying her in and then you have a follow-up from gang orca followed by the diversion that's led by um flaming and before that the double flash fire and Seto pulling them back already this is very good choreography for what we're seeing here and it'll be a little bit different from like everyone versus all for one just because all for one isn't just like taking the hits now he's like dishing them back out as well although at least seeing all the abilities all the effects just one after the other hopefully that'll create for some hopefully that'll allow for some really cool shenanigan um and again you know like the the money shot in the current opening i think is a good starting point for how you could have all of class 1a help ease the coup approach or something like that you know yes. I, i'm hopeful i'm hopeful to see some really neat stuff Anyway, uh, you guys got my predictions for what I think is going to happen in the future. You guys know I think the villains are going to come back and kind of call Shikaraki back from the brink. Uh, you know what I think we're missing. Uh, you know my thoughts on the chapter. I think I, uh, I think I did everything. And I just want to say uh, w very quick thanks to one particular commenter, Alex Tran. And I, I'm pretty sure that's the username. Thanks, Alex, for coming back and like mentioning that you missed the Hero Academia reviews. It's kind of easy to forget that sometimes because you know the channel isn't as happening as it used to be in the past but i hope if you're watching this video that you enjoyed it and of course live stream crew hope you enjoyed the video too anyway guys thank you so much for watching and until next time i hope you have an absolutely great day